This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 343, The Incredible Progress of Daily Practice, by Leo Babauta of zenhabits.net. And I'm Dr. Neil Malik, your narrator of blogs covering health and fitness. I read to you from some of the most popular blogs out there, with author permission, of course. And we're lucky to have a sponsor of this episode. It helps keep the podcast running. And that sponsor is Talkspace, the online therapy company that lets you choose from over 1,500 licensed therapists. Get matched with your perfect therapist who can put you on the path to a happier life. For a special offer just for you, visit Talkspace.com slash OHD. And with that, let's hear today's post as we optimize your life. The Incredible Progress of Daily Practice by Leo Babauta of zenhabits.net. Lately in my life, I've been repeatedly reminded of the power of practicing something regularly. Daily is best I've learned, but several times a week works well too. You'd be surprised how much progress you can make with even a small amount of practice applied regularly. Some examples in my life recently. One, a daily yoga practice of just 10 minutes. I'm not an experienced yogi. I'm very inflexible. And because I only practice yoga sporadically, I don't really make any progress. But recently, I committed to practicing yoga for just 10 minutes a day, a few sun salutations mostly. When I started, my shoulders would get exhausted and downward dog fairly quickly. But now, I'm able to hold the poses for longer without tiring as much. I've really seen some solid progress with just 10 minutes of daily practice. Of course, that's not the point of yoga. It's a mindfulness practice. But it's still amazing to see that kind of progress. Two running three to four times a week with Ava. Ava and I started doing a half marathon training plan by No Meat Athlete about six or seven weeks ago. We do three to four runs a week, depending on our schedules. And when we started out, we were both pretty out of shape. Ava had to stop a couple of times, even on a two mile run. And I was far from my peak running shape. But six weeks into it, just doing short runs, we can see a huge difference. At no point did we push ourselves too hard but just doing it regularly really made a solid amount of progress. Three, studying Go for just 10 to 20 minutes a day. I've been studying the ancient Chinese game of Go this year, and I'm still very weak at it. Honestly, if I had more time to study, I might be much stronger. But instead, I've been just doing about 10 to 20 minutes of studying a day, and I'm still making noticeable progress with my calculating ability. Still not strong, but I'm getting stronger slowly by just putting in a minimal amount of study time. Four, chin-ups with my son three times a week. In the last couple of weeks, my 13-year-old son and I decided to do a chin-ups challenge. Three times a week, we do five sets of chin-ups during the day. When I started out, I could only do 10 or 11 chin-ups per set, but now I can do around 16 to 17 each set in less than two weeks. That kind of progress is encouraging. Five, daily focus sessions by a client. I have a coaching client who does daily focus sessions, training himself to focus on something longer. He just does 15-minute sessions every day, which isn't a lot, but he's seen his ability increase noticeably, even when he's not doing a focus session. Just a small amount of daily practice, or at least a few times a week. It's powerful. And here's what I've learned. One, if you're studying something, you forget less. It's great to study for a couple of hours, but if you don't study for a few days after that, you'll start forgetting. Daily study sessions, even if they're short, interrupt the forgetting process. Therefore, it's more efficient as you don't slip backwards, but keep making forward progress. Two, if you are weak, you get stronger without injury. It's hard to get stronger when you're weak at yoga, running, chin-ups, whatever. But small regular doses will get you stronger slowly. If you give yourself big doses hoping for faster progress, you're more likely to get injured, burn out, or get demotivated because of the difficulty level. Slow and small is better. Three, progress isn't noticeable in the first week, but it is after a couple of weeks. If you're just giving yourself small training or study doses, you won't see any differences at first. That's okay, keep doing it. After a couple of weeks, you'll notice some solid progress, and a month into it, you'll see major improvement. Keep at it. Four, small doses make it easy to do daily. If you want to train for an hour a day, that is only sustainable for a while. Eventually, you'll run out of energy or things will get busy and you won't have time for your hour-long session. Maybe you'll miss two or three days in a row. 
Now you've lost motivation and you're discouraged. It's better to do it in small doses because it's easier to get started when you know you're just doing 10 to 15 minutes of it and it's easier to find the time and motivation for small sessions. And five, make sure it's fun. Doing a chore is boring and hard and you'll pull it off even if it's just a 10 minute session. Instead, don't make it a chore that you have to get through. Make it a game that you look forward to doing or a mini meditation session that brings peace to your life, a time to relax, or a moment of magic and loveliness. Create an activity that you'll look forward to. Bring the magic of small, regular practice to your life. You just listened to the post titled The Incredible Progress of Daily Practice by Leo Babauta of zenhabits.net. A therapist can definitely help you with progress. And Talkspace, the online therapy company, makes it easy to connect with an experienced licensed therapist that you pick based on your preferences for way less than traditional therapy. What's really cool is that you can send your therapist text, audio, and video messages, or even do a live video chat. Talkspace therapists are fully licensed and go through a rigorous screening process. Plus, they've done thousands of hours of supervised professional training. So, to match you with your perfect therapist, go to Talkspace.com slash OHD. And as a special offer for our listeners, you can use the coupon code OHD to get $30 off your first month, all while showing your support for this podcast. That's the code OHD, and you can use that at Talkspace.com slash OHD. An example for me that comes to mind when I think about small little changes and how they can lead to big, big improvements. I used to, of course, get asked as a trainer, how do I get six-pack abs? Probably the most common question I would get. Now think about all the different routines that are out there. There are probably millions of six-pack ab routines that all claim the same thing. If you do what we tell you to do, you will get your six-pack. Now, of course, diet plays a huge role. Other types of exercises that you're doing, your age, your gender, your genetics, all of those things play a role when it comes to getting that six pack. But when I looked at all of those routines and I kind of did my own anecdotal analysis of it, I realized that they all had something in common. You need to spend about 45 minutes each week in total on ab-related exercises. That was the common factor. When you look at P90X or Insanity or John Baisdow's DVDs or sections of books that talk about getting abs, the common foundation is you've got to spend the time doing it. 45 minutes per week was what I noticed, again, was kind of common amongst all of these routines. So P90X recommends, for example, you do 15 minutes of straight ab exercises three times a week. Another source will say 10 minutes of ab exercises five days a week. And so what I would end up telling folks is just do some ab exercises, just a little bit, five minutes, seven minutes, every single day. And then we would add up how many minutes they spent at the end of the week. And in my mind, if they were close to about 45 minutes worth, we're probably in good shape. Oh, literally and figuratively. Now, how much better did that sound when I told my clients that, hey, you only have to do five or seven minutes of ab moves every day versus you're gonna have to do 15 minutes of ab moves three times a week. 15 minutes sounds exhausting. But if we can break it up into small, little, regular habits, over time, it can become something really, really great. And so we're breaking it up into small doses that make it easy to do daily and to make it sort of fun for them. I would say you can have the TV on, just be sure you're concentrating and using proper form, but I don't mind if you have music on in the background, the TV, whatever. So I agree completely with what Leo is saying. Small changes, if done regularly, if done with consistency, can lead to big results. That's it for today. I hope you're having a great week. Thank you, as always, for listening. Thank you for sharing this show with a friend. I'll be back tomorrow with a post from Roman Fitness Systems. So I'll see you there where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism, 
from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember, your optimal life awaits.